today on an all-new Dr. Phil, musical legend David Cassidy. I have the early stages of dementia for the first time. You got diagnosed two years ago. How has it deteriorated? He speaks out about his dementia. When friends say to you, I just told you this, didn't you hear me? That's when I began to be very concerned. And his family's history. I always said to my son, if you ever see me get to the place that my mother has become, I want you to promise me to find a way to let me go. And don't let me live like that. From the heights of success Come on, get to recent troubles. I was in such uh, scary pain. I went and got drunk. And the latest headlines. He was concerned that a worrisome concert appearance might lead some to falsely believe his drinking problem was back. Are you having trouble performing? No. It did appear you were losing your place. You stopped and said, I don't remember. You slipped on the stage. People have said, what are you, drunk? A Dr. Phil exclusive. DUIs and dementia. Inside David Cassidy's secret battle. Today, in an exclusive interview, musical legend David Cassidy speaks out for the first time since revealing he is battling dementia. Cassidy shot to fame in the 70s thanks to his role as the oldest of five children on the hit show, The Partridge Family. The former teen heartthrob's face adorned posters on millions of young girls' walls, and his fan club had more members than Elvis and the Beatles combined. David Cassidy became a teenage heartthrob in the 1970s as Keith Partridge on the television show The Partridge Family. David Cassidy was 19 and had recently made his Broadway debut when he was cast as Keith Partridge. Soon afterwards, he skyrocketed into teen idol status on a ride he could barely control. Remember Friday nights in the early 70s? Once the Partridge Family bus drove on TV, teenagers all over America went absolutely bananas for David Cassidy. You should have seen what happened to me today while I was registering for classes. Nineteen girls and me are taking auto shop. Not easy being a sex symbol. In the 70s, when David Cassidy was America's primetime television hunk, just about every young girl in America had dreams of getting him between the sheets. The show launched David into the stratosphere of superstardom. At age 21, he was the highest paid performer on the globe. He sold 25 million records and was the highest paid solo live performer by the time he was 21. But along with the bright lights, red carpets, and massive sold out crowds, came problems that Cassidy struggled with secretly. Along with fame, came untold pressures that took a toll, leading to a dark battle with substance abuse. Take a look. David Cassidy, best known for his role in the 70s hit show, The Partridge Family, facing three charges, DUI, failure to drive in a single lane, and possessing an open container. Yet another drunk driving arrest for a former teen heartthrob. Police outside of Albany pulled over David Cassidy early this morning. If I take another drink, I'm going to die, physically, Mentally, emotionally, spiritually, I'm dead. One sip, one drink. 70s heartthrob David Cassidy being forced to put his Fort Lauderdale home up for auction. The home includes six bedrooms, six baths, a swimming pool, a dock, and a boat lift. David Cassidy is facing more legal troubles. The former Partridge family star has now agreed to give up his driver's license until 2021. That follows a reckless driving charge. Some difficult news from the now 66-year-old actor and musician. Cassidy telling People magazine he's suffering from dementia, the same disease he watched erase the memories of both his grandfather and mother. As for Cassidy, the one-time teen heartthrob will stop touring, taking on a new role in the fight of his life. After more than half a century of performing, Cassidy is stepping out of the spotlight. The 66-year-old made the announcement following a string of recent performances where he fell down on stage and forgot lyrics to songs he's been singing for decades. Many fans in attendance had cell phones on record and captured what appears to be David slurring his speech in a textile company, stumbling and at times rambling incoherently. Take a look. The former Partridge family star says he was concerned that a worrisome concert appearance might lead some to falsely believe his drinking problem was back. 
when David Cassidy first came out, he kind of stumbled out. And then when he opened his mouth, started singing and everything, I'm going, wait a minute, this guy's drunk. That's what we all started thinking. And everybody around me started going, oh my God, he's drunk. David, David, coffee, coffee. David really wasn't out there long at all before the audience knew that, you know, something was up. And they just started yelling things at him. And then they kept talking through his whole performance. Yeah, obviously you're not listening. So it doesn't matter. I'll just shut up now. I saw him kind of stumble and not remember the words to familiar songs. And he looked like he might be drunk or something. I've never seen a concert that went this bad, ever, ever. Now, in an exclusive interview, David Cassidy speaks out for the first time since revealing he is battling dementia. David, how are you? Good uh, to meet you. Well, nice to meet you, too. It's, Pleasure to it's, meet. it's an honor. Have a seat. Well, thank you. And to me, too. I was very glad to get the call that you wanted to sit down and, and talk about this. I did, about everything. And um, I've been a big fan thank all, you. all of my life. I understand that you recently have announced that you have been diagnosed with dementia. I have. And, uh, and that you're now coming forward and talking about that in an open fashion and I, I think it's I, essential well I commend you for that well and thank you I wanted to come and talk to you because I know how broad your influence and your audience is to let them know you know I'm really okay tell me when were you diagnosed two and a half years ago what was the first symptom that you noticed when friends of yours or family members begin to say to you remember I just told you this two days ago, and there is no memory of it. Mm -hmm. I can remember details of automobiles I drove in in 1967, but it's the recent memory. And when that starts to become something that you hear from people who love you and care for you mm -hmm. and keep saying, I just told you this, didn't you hear me? That's when I began to uh, be very concerned. Was that what caused you to say, I need to go get myself checked? Oh, my God, yes. I need to go back and explain to you that my mother uh, died on the night of Christmas Eve three years ago now. I took care of her for seven years. I was her only living relative. What was your mother's specific diagnosis? Dementia. Was there a specific type of dementia that she had? Was it Alzheimer's or? No, it was not no. Alzheimer's. Uh -huh. Beautiful woman and a beautiful person. I loved her so dearly. You know, I felt a tremendous burden though, to be honest. To watch your mother disappear is very painful. There are a number of elements that come to play genetically. My grandfather had dementia and died without really knowing who he was or where he was, who is my mother's father. It, it was very painful to see my grandfather disappear. Mm -hmm. And then to know that my mother was diagnosed, I think I was on tour working at the time, she was found by police about 50 yards from her apartment in her nightgown, nearly naked, and was lost on the street at about midnight. So when I got that call, I nearly lost my mind. Right. My mother, basically, she lived in a diaper and mm -hmm. couldn't talk, couldn't walk, more or less just taking up air and space and having people take care of her and having really no knowledge of it. And the only way I knew I was the only person she recognized is when I would walk into her hospital room and where she lived, which was in a care, a tear would come down her face. That's the only way I knew that she recognized me. Do you think about the fact that, wow, my grandfather's gone from this, my mother's gone from this, now I'm on the path? 
Of course I do. How could I not? Right. I mean, what kind of a moron would I be to go, oh, no, i living in that kind of denial? I have the beginning stages, the early stages of dementia. And, and you've been to Cleveland Clinic, right? I have. I always said to my friends and to my son, I said, look, if you ever see me get to the place that my mother has become, I said, if you ever see me like this, I want you to promise me you'll find a way to let me go and don't let me live like that, please. What did he say to that? He cried, what I'm doing right now. He didn't agree to that, did he? No. It's a burden to put on his child. I, it's a horrible burden to put on anybody. You say you got first diagnosed two and a half years ago. Let's talk about your curve. At that time, you said you noticed short-term memory disruption. How has it deteriorated? How has it altered in the two and a half years since you were first diagnosed? I can still remember nearly everything, but things that happened in the most recent time, and people have looked at me at times and said, what are you, drunk? Are you on drugs? Or what, what's your deal? And I'm like, no, what did, I, what did I do? What did I say? Because I don't recall, and I'm not aware of how the curve has gone because I'm in it. I can't watch it. Are you having trouble performing? No, I wouldn't say that. There was a lot of press in the last week about a performance that you gave here in L.A. Right. Uh, that people thought I was drunk. Yeah. There were people this who is, said nothing. This is some of the footage of it now. Right. And Which I wasn't, of course. Absolutely not. 99% of the feedback was incredibly, remarkably positive. The only thing that makes the headlines or the news is anything negative, as we know that. How did that performance go, in your opinion? Coming up. Some of the fans said that they saw you down a glass of wine in one big drink before the show. And later. I worked seven days a week. I worked all day on the set. I had my own solo career. And then on the weekends, I would fly out and do two shows on Saturday, two shows on Sunday. People can't even imagine. Is this the toll that it's taken on you now? DUIs and dementia. Inside David Cassidy's secret battle continues. When I think of David Cassidy, I feel young, I feel giddy, I feel in love. There's a lot of magic associated with watching David. It's always been a lifelong dream because I've always loved the Partridge family and loved David. So this was really awesome to see him. He's a legend. How did that performance go, in your opinion? Well, the audience thought it was fantastic, and as you can see the fans there, I, I heard nothing but amazing, amazing. I was suffering, however, from laryngitis. Well, the reason um, I was glad that you called to talk about this is oh, because you. I did hear some of the fans that were saying that you appeared intoxicated so I looked at some of the footage and and let me tell you when I practiced a lot of my focus was brain and central nervous system uh -huh. it did appear to me that there were times that you were losing your place because you stopped a few times and, and said I, I don't remember and then right. you said at one point I can tell you're not going to listen, so I'm just going to leave. <laughs> when I was a teenager, before I became a recording artist, I was never more flattered. Yeah, obviously you're not listening, so it doesn't matter. I'll just shut up now. I, I, and you did I slip off the stage at one point. Not really slip, no. 
You, I, you I slipped on the sleep. stage. The video was provided to us by TMZ. I did not realize there was a monitor there. If you'll notice, I'm one of the few people that still have monitors in front. Right. And, still and when ears. you have spotlights in your eyes, and you've had five eye surgeries, as I've had, yeah. and I've talked a lot about it, you'll see me there. Yeah. I tripped on that, but I certainly wasn't intoxicated, and it has nothing to do with why I'm leaving, doing what I've done, beginning as an actor and a performer who's done eight shows a week, for years, certainly my dementia has contributed to the reason why I don't want to go out and I don't want to hear, well, he looked like he was drunk or he looked like he was, I, I wasn't. I've already heard it from people who have said this to me in the last year. It's like, you seem like you're really not right. You weren't, you were off. And I'm like, no. You've had problems with alcohol across time, correct? Oh yeah. Some of the fans said that they saw you down a, a glass of wine in one big drink before the show. How, so you how could clear that it be up. true? They said it was in the bar. I hadn't been to the bar. The See, Sheridan in Agora Hills. Never. That's why I'm asking Period. so you can clear it up. But again, rumors start and it turns into like a, a firestorm. And once you've had a label which is a fact that I am an alcoholic. You've but been very forthcoming about that. I've tried to, to, to educate because hundreds of millions of human beings are addicts. Alcoholism mm -hmm. is a disease. Addiction is a disease. Yeah. And the criticism that I hear and the stories that I've heard, I've been at bars and I've been, it's like, really? Okay, fine. What if I was sitting at a bar, which by the way, I like to sit and eat at a bar, mm -hmm. and having a glass of water, which someone could say, oh, he's drinking. But I, I can only say that rumors begin and it's virtually all negative, hurtful, cruel, and antagonistic. I want to show you a little of your show, I want to show you a little footage of it. Please I'm not asking about the quality of it, I'm asking about the behavior of it, is what I'm asking well, about. I, but if you don't want to see it, I won't I show don't. it to you. Okay. I, because it may upset me and I don't need to get upset, yeah. do I? No. I asked David how he honestly felt about what I considered to be an impaired performance. He insisted he felt he did a great job. But when I invited him to view the footage with me, he declined, saying he feared it would upset him. If he really felt he did a great job, why would it be upsetting? Is there a deeper problem beyond his dementia? While he did not want to view it with me, he did give us permission to show it. Thank you. When he started singing the songs and he didn't know the words, I knew something was wrong because he had been singing these songs for years. He would have known these songs and it was really sad. He taught me a lot about life and being a star, etc. And I know you're really probably preoccupied with everything else you're talking about, but you can hear it. You told People Magazine that you had been pretty much sober for the last two and a half years. Correct. What do you mean by pretty much? Coming up. You have a daughter, Katie. A biological um, daughter. Right. I never raised her. Yeah. I, this is not someone that you knew or was in your life or no. active with? No. Do you have any contact with her at all? We now return to DUIs and Dementia, a Dr. Phil exclusive. David says he was diagnosed with dementia two and a half years ago, and although he chose not to produce any confirming medical records, I do take him at his word. However, I've seen the footage of that night, and like many fans who attended his show, he was, in my opinion, impaired. I have to wonder if this was due to the dementia or if there was more at play. 
Many, including other professionals I consulted, believe his conduct appeared to be more consistent with intoxication than very early onset dementia. You told People Magazine that you had been pretty much sober for the last two and a half years. Correct. What do you mean by pretty much? Well, I'd fallen off what you, two what, and a half years ago. What I, gets you when you fall off? What's your? Is it whiskey? Is it beer? Is it what gets you when you fall off? Oh, I don't drink hard alcohol. I won't do that. You drink wine, beer, yeah, beer, beer or wine, yeah. Do you binge or you just? I binge two, three days and then stop, and then I go back to AA. How bad do you feel after a binge? Terrible. Head wise, are you fuzzy? Oh God, yeah. You don't get really clear for the first, I don't know, few months. It takes longer when you've got dementia, right? I mean, oh, God, it's yeah. harder to... It's like having a tire fire in your brain. Yeah. So you were not drunk at the Agora Hills performance? I was not at all. No drugs, no alcohol? I've never taken illegal drugs. Yeah. The alcohol toxicity can be one of the key contributors to dementia. I believe that. Genetics uh, is a contributor. Uh, what we ingest, if you pour alcohol on top of dementia, you can really have a problem. So I'm glad to hear it's been two years. It's two years, yeah. Part of the reason that I fell off the first time was that I got the diagnosis. Yeah. And having lived with my mother for all those years and watching her disappear, the depression and the loss my alcoholism that developed somewhere around the late 90s where I was working 10 shows a week and my marriage was very unhappy and I was on such an insane work schedule that I put so much pressure on it because I took care of everybody. My mom died basically an hour before Christmas Eve. That's when I started really drinking heavily when she was in her last days. I would come to the hospital. I couldn't come unless I was completely intoxicated. Yeah. It was too painful for me. Your drinking came between you and your son, right? Oh, big for time, yeah. Time. There were a number of elements that entered into it, but yes. Yeah. I was the ideal father. Yeah. I would do anything for him. He's the love of my life. And probably the reason that I didn't kill myself, because of him. You have a daughter, Katie. A biological uh, daughter, right. right? I never raised her. Yeah, but right. this is not someone that you knew or was in your life or no. active with? No. Do you have any contact with her at all? No. Yeah. Her choice was than mine, I think. But yeah. because we had no, you know, there was no chemistry to begin with. I didn't meet her until she was like I don't know, 12, 13. Mm -hmm. She was sweet and lovely, and I think she's very talented, and I'm proud of her for that. My son sees her occasionally. You know, her half-brother. She's a beautiful girl, though. Uh, and I'm proud of her success and her work ethic also. Mm -hmm. Maybe I instilled some of that in her. Yeah. I don't know. Now you, How many brothers do you have? Three half-brothers. Yeah, three half-brothers. Right. Well, they're both, we're all from descendants of my alcoholic father. Right. At least two of us, or probably three of us, got the gene. So you don't have a relationship with them? Coming up. Do you think you have insight, objectivity to recognize your level of functioning at this point? Or could you be in denial about where you are on the functionality chain right now? Closed captioning provided by... We now return to Dr. Phil's exclusive interview with David Cassidy. So you don't have a relationship with them? You don't see them on a regular basis? I will see my brother Ryan tomorrow. I never grew up with them. But because we don't live in the same place, we don't work in the same business, mm -hmm. I wish them nothing but love in their life. It's you, Sean, Patrick, and Ryan, right? right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Do they know about your diagnosis? No. So they'll learn about it if they... Well, I'm sure they know about it now yeah. since it's been all over viral and now in... People Magazine and everything else, which is great. I want people to know about it. Right. But it would be like me calling them going, oh, gosh, do you know I just got diagnosed? I am not that guy. I just don't do that. I didn't call anybody. In fact, at first, I was in such scary pain. 
Did you go through denial for a while? Or Complete what? denial. It depressed the hell out of me. I went and got drunk two and a half years ago, and I stayed inebriated for a while, which was the denial. It's the filter from the reality. And once I came to, I began to accept it and say, well, there are a lot of things that I can do, both health-wise, um, brain-wise, and to continue to do the things that I love to do that uh, inspire me. One of the reasons why I've chosen 2017 to be the last for me going out and touring, it's not I'm going to say I'll never do another concert. I may. I don't know. But I just don't want to tour anymore. Uh, go through the travel, the stress, and all of people's perceptions that go up in this cesspool of Internet where anybody's voice can be heard and people in the dark sitting there making evil comments or whatever. And it hurts me personally that a lot of my fans and a lot of people buy into it. You know, somebody says it. Oh, yeah, it's fact. I just read it. It's a fact. And I can't tell you how, what a pleasure it is for me and what a great opportunity you've given me to discuss this and my issue. I'm curious, having dealt with so many folks that have been through this, few that have shown the openness and courage that you have, I can tell you. Do you think you have insight, objectivity to recognize your level of functioning at this point? Yes. Or could you be in denial about where you are on the functionality chain right now? I believe I do have a very good understanding about where I am with it. Do you have someone in your life that you trust that can be your checkpoint that you can go to and say, I think I'm functioning really well right now. I think I'm at an eight. Tell me, is that right or am I at a three? I think this concert was a nine. Was it a two? Do you have somebody that can be a truth mirror for yeah. you that gives you feedback? And who is that? I do. Um, well, he's one of my best friends. He's a brilliant musician. He plays with me. We talk together about everything. And he is as honest with me about me and each performance that I do. And we'll say, I said, I thought that was great. And he'd go, mm, not Is she with great. you on tour right now? Yes. Did you ask him about this at Gora Hills show? No, he never said anything to me. If he, if he thought I was really out and wrong and not right, he would tell me. I want you to ask him what he thinks and tell me what he says. Okay. At one point, you started to talk for a long time and they played over you to get you to stop. Yeah, and that was the greatest criticism in the last couple of years, is that I would occasionally repeat myself, but I would tell stories and a lot of, other than my hardcore fans that would come and, you know, I could read the telephone book as people have said, but I always love to tell stories for the reason of taking him through a musical journey of my life it was the most incredibly committed, had the most integrity of any human being I've ever met. You've had money troubles in the past. Do you worry about not being able to work and burdening your family financially? Closed captioning provided by... We now return to DUIs and Dementia, a Dr. Phil exclusive. The teen pop idol David Cassidy is bankrupt at 65. But before his Fort Lauderdale waterfront mansion goes to auction, Cassidy hopes his five bed, six and a half bath nets enough money to absolve his half million dollar debt. Here's the gym. You know, age and arthritis has caught up with me a little bit. But it's more than sore joints and arthritis catching up with Cassidy. In addition to the bankruptcy, the retired pop star has recently been to rehab for alcoholism. You've had money troubles in the past. Do mm. you worry about not being able to work and burdening your family financially? Mm -mm. I just did a reorganization from my divorce. We 
did it amicably. I have no financial problems at this point at all. I am in a reorganization. I don't know if we know the president of the United States now. I don't think anybody knows he's... How many bankruptcies has he? Five? Six? Well, this is the first time for me it was necessary for me to do that for my business. A couple of questions about the Partridge family no era, problem. era of your life. I loved it. Hello world, hear the song that we're singing. Come on, get happy. Was that a fun time for you? Oh, boy, how to describe it. It was like being at the nose of a rocket ship. That family that you're seeing there was Susan Day and Shirley and Danny Bonaduce, who I love him. He's just such an incredibly gifted and wonderful human being. But he is kind of like my little brother. But I worked seven days a week. I worked all day on the set, and I would drive across the road and then record as the Partridge family. And also, I had my own solo career right. as David Cassidy. And then on the weekends, I would fly out and do two shows on Saturday, two shows on Sunday, fly back to L.A., and at 7.30 in the morning, on Monday morning, I'm on the set. You try having a relationship. Unbelievable. No, it's insanity. And I did that for f five years, literally, nonstop. And then I toured, when we were on Hayes, I toured around the world. It was a magnificent time in America to be alive. And I think in the world, there was a lot more emphasis upon peace, love, and happiness. If you look back now, think about this. You just described five days a week, seven o'clock in the morning, then going across the street, recording as a Partridge family, recording as David Cassidy, then on the weekends you're off. Mm -hmm. Thousands of fans chasing you around, doing stadiums all over the world. Mm -hmm. The most intense, I mean, intense people, life. people can't even imagine. Is this the toll that it's taken on you now? Because we know environment, we know stress, we know all of these things that do take their toll. I'm sure it's contributing. Are you paying part of the price? Is that, is that? There is no way you can start and go through the tunnel having the largest fan club in the history of the planet and having people sleeping outside your gates. And I, I, there was a girl who <laughs> I discovered was sleeping in between my air conditioning unit in my house and my bathroom where I showered and everything else for a month. I've had many, many, many people, stalkers. I had to leave my house for six weeks because there was a legitimate threat of kidnapping. I want you to think about this. Looking at this picture here, at this era, moving up here, yeah. coming across, yeah. all the way up to here, mm -hmm. coming around, mm -hmm. down to here. Right. If you knew then what you know now, <laughs> As you sit here today, mm. <laughs> would you take this journey again? Do you think retiring from touring. show business touring, at least, do you think that that silence is going to be deafening? DUIs and dementia. Inside David Cassidy's secret battle continues. As you sit here today, mm. <laughs> Would you take this journey again? Absolutely. How has the ride been? Extraordinarily bumpy. Extraordinarily elating me to a place of feeling like I died and went to heaven. I never had a job. I always worked at what I loved to do. I think I love you. I think I love you. Be it as an actor be it as a musician, as a songwriter, as a singer. I, I got to do everything I wanted to do professionally in my life, which is why I, I struggled for the last year. Knowing the condition of where my brain is, and I have the early stages of dementia, and knowing that it doesn't contribute 
to my mental health to continue to do what I've been doing. So I'm going to do two shows in about two weeks, and that will be my, what I think is my final concert. And certainly what I've planned on in 2017, but it took me a year to really make the decision because I've never known anything else mm -hmm. since I was three and a half years old. I've had foot surgery. I get shots in my back for cortisone. I have arthritis in my hands. Mm -hmm. And I'm just gonna keep going because it's what I know to do. It's what I love to do. And it's funny what adrenaline does, as you would know this. When I get out on the stage, I could be limping before I get out on the stage. When I got on the stage, bang. Yeah. Do you, do you trust yourself now, cognitively, to be by yourself, live independently, drive around, do the things you need to do? Absolutely. I you completely do. And I live, basically, I live alone, but... But your short-term memory is... It, it occasionally does fail, and I, yeah. I have to acknowledge it, accept it, and not live in denial of it. But, for example, if... If I bought something from you for $1.87 mm -hmm. and I gave you five bucks, how much change would you give me? Well, I'd give you about $3.13, right? Something right. like that. Yeah. Uh, or, so you're able, to, you calculate well. Very well. Where do you stay out here when you come? Here in town. In a hotel? Yeah, a very small boutique hotel. Yeah. What was your room number? Um, 227. Yeah. I might have a key in my pocket. Okay. What does there that say? It says 227. Thank you. All right, there you go. See, I'm not that far gone yet. That's what I mean. What's your greatest fear for the future as you, take, as you continue on this path? Being in the place that my mother was the last two years of her life where I would completely disappear and I'd just be a burden mm -hmm. to caretakers and couldn't walk, couldn't talk, couldn't sing, couldn't play. That's kind of my greatest fear, actually, yeah. Do you think retiring from touring. show business, touring at least, do you think that that silence is going to be deafening? No, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> I've done so many thousands of performances, writing, creating television series, producing shows in Vegas. I did over 2,000 shows in Las Vegas. So I've experienced all of it. I've written hundreds of songs that I've recorded and other artists have recorded some of my music. So there's not anything left that I haven't done that I need to feed myself and fulfill my creative juices, mm -hmm. you know? And that's where I am. I'm just completely and totally uh, comfortable with the idea. Last question. Mm -hmm. What do you want to most be remembered for? Closed captioning provided by... Last question. Mm -hmm. What do you want to most be remembered for? Spreading love. Bringing light into people's lives. Mm -hmm. Giving everything in my heart and soul. Because I know I'm a loving, caring human being. I don't mind being remembered for being an alcoholic. I don't mind being that. Well, as someone that works in the mental health field, I can't thank you enough for shining a light on dementia and letting people know where you are on the curve right now and facing this. I want my team to join your team mm -hmm. and let us Let's talk help about you it. in any way that I'd we can. I'd love to talk about it. Because I, I have access to the best of the best, and if I can help you in any way, I'm telling you right now. I love that I'm, you just offered me I'm on me your that. team. Well, thank you so much. Uh, you have no idea how much I appreciate you. Yeah, God David, bless you. Thank you so much, my, my friend. My pleasure. I want to thank David Cassidy for bravely opening up about his struggles with dementia for the first time. I have offered him every resource in my considerable support system be it for diagnosis or treatment planning for dementia or inpatient dual diagnosis treatment for alcoholism. We stand ready to provide resources and support to David as I hope many others in his life do as well. If you or a loved one is suffering from Alzheimer's or dementia, go to drphil.com.
When you get there, you're going to find more information about this disease. We're going to address the myths that plague people's understanding about this and give you some of the facts that you need to know to recognize this disease and information that's important in dealing with it for yourself or for a family member. You can also call the 24-hour helpline from Alzheimer's Association, 1-800-272-3900, or you can visit their website, alz.org, for support groups or more information. Thanks for watching. Well, the word. The first concert I went to of his was in Galveston, Texas, and it was just like there was pure magic in the air. I love him because he's probably my first crush when I was little, you know, Partridge Family, watching that when I was little. I just want to thank him for all the years of performing that I was able to really appreciate him and his music and all he's done and the fact that I think he's pretty great.